So uh, let's kick it off, guys. What I wanted to talk about um, this week was, you know, we're halfway through the year, first week of the, you know, the new quarter, and just kind of want to reflect back on, you know, how everyone did with their, their first half of the year. Maybe let's kind of open up, you know, do you know your numbers? How did you do? How many closings did you have? What numbers are you measuring? Uh, what are you trying to accomplish this next half of the year? And then maybe, um, you know, get some, some Q&A on, you know, what you need to do to make that happen. Um, so if anybody wants to share, you know, how they perform this first half of the year, whether it's good, bad, it doesn't matter. The numbers are what they are. Um, but what are we going to do going forward? So let's open that up. Who wants to go? Who wants to be vulnerable today? And I'm happy to go. I mean, we we have, are having an incredible year. We actually exceeded what we set out to do in the early early part of the year. We thought we would be aiming towards 500 million. Um, this year to date, we closed 254 million dollars in real estate business. Uh, with between 347 transactions, we have 127, 121 pending with 89 million. Uh, so we're we're tracking to do 700 million this year. Uh, this year I've had about 200, I track, so I track everything by the week with my coach, uh, Raquel, we I have, actually happy to show you guys a blank spreadsheet too. I really like what she has. Um, I've done about 260 attraction calls. So 40 last month, and we've added 80 team members to our team. So it's just, just really looking at those numbers and making sure I'm, I'm pretty much all I'm focused on are on actions. Like, you know, I learned that from a lot from my coach and Andy C on clubhouse. I heard that a lot, like leading indicators versus lighting indicators. So on the team, we don't really care what people are producing, what they're doing. We just care, you know, are you making your calls? Are you booking appointments? Are you writing offers? And so for, for me as a team leader, it's really just focusing on, you know, how many list appointments have I been on and how many agents am I talking to? And that that's going to determine the rest of my business. Awesome, man. Um, definitely impressive, bro. We're all watching you, uh, seeing, your, seeing your success and seeing your grind and it's inspiring. But I, I like what you said right there was that you're focusing on more of the actions, right? Like, are you making your calls? Are you talking to people? Because that's going to lead to the final result. Um, so I like that you pointed that out because sometimes we focus on like, okay, I want to close this many deals, but what are the things that are going to make those deals, you know, come in or whether, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's, you know, loans, recruit, you know, stuff like that. It, it starts with, with the action items. So, um, Kenny, I guess the second half of the year, is there anything that you're going to change? Is there anything that you think you have to do differently or is it just continue to do the things that you're already doing? Um, <clears throat> not second half, but we're like, we're doing, we're always looking at like what's lacking um, and we're big on hiring ahead. So, you know, we've had the same leadership team since last year, but we, we already see some pinpoints. So we're, we're interviewing for talent right now. There's a couple of roles, you know, through all these ESP mastermind stuff there, you hear about new things, but we're not hiring specifically for one thing. Uh, but the later part of the year, we want to get some more additional support for our leadership team. So leadership supports operations person. We, you know, although we're growing the space, we don't have a real integrator. I've been kind of, I've been the visionary and kind of pulling things together. You know, we have different departments, but they don't all speak to each other. So there's, there's a need for a person to understand the goals for each department and figure out how to do that together so we have a big list oh we'd like to do this and do that like monday we find a month later we did monday.com um i heard a guy named john glutch uh esp big team do wow coordinator and then like I talked to my coach yesterday I just wrote down four things we're hiring for so we're hiring a per person to be like an agent success or a concierge person where she will only focus we'll have her come in She'll make calls to our existing agents, escrows, clients, and ask for reviews and referrals. And then on the other side, she'll help me with like um, setting up appointments for recruiting and engaging with my agents for retention. So we're, we, we just literally just thought of this right uh, randomly after a couple of calls with her and the team and the coach. Like, hey, you know what? This is a person with a really great personality. What can we do with her? So reviews, referral, recruiting, retention. So we're building out a whole new role that we weren't expecting. We just know that that will increase business and operations person because we just have way too many things going on that we, every leadership person on our team as at, is at their maximum bandwidth. So we're doing great, but we can't do more projects. So, I mean, at this pace, doing thousand deals this year is amazing, but you know, whatever I want to get to 2000. So like these people can't do it. So we got to offset their, their tasks 
and continue high more assistance offset the stuff they don't want to do. So they're only working in the very, the, literally the most highest ROI activity and action that they can be doing at all times. So we're constantly hiring ahead and hiring uh, for like to, to take off tasks of certain people. That's awesome, bro. Um, and I, I think the, a, a big takeaway, right? You're, you're, you're doing things on a, on a big scale, but I think a big takeaway is just as you want to produce more, you got to, a lot of times it's not necessarily adding, well, adding agents, right? will produce more, but also adding more support people, right? Because yeah, operations can, is yeah. key to, to grow because then otherwise it becomes a hot mess. Yeah, exactly. You have a bunch of agents that are, you know, not being efficient, right? Or they're spending time on things that are low level you're not getting the, the most out of each agent, right? So leverage and operations and all that stuff becomes becomes the, the barrier for growth, right? That's the thing that you're gonna need to grow to the next level. Good stuff, bro. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Kenny, real uh, quick, Kiki, uh, Kenny, are you still in production? You, you mentioned that you're, are you still going on listing appointments? Or are you yeah, focusing still on- I still go on probably like eight, 10 listing appointments a month. Uh, buyer side, I give it all my, I've, I've been on like, I've been on like, I think 60 or 70 contracts this year, but I'm trying to get myself off of all buyer deals. It like, doesn't matter the price point. And I mean, taking a cue from all the top people, they're all off production. So I can focus on company, uh, but listings is just way too hard. It's really, I mean, same, we're similar market to you. It's just too competitive to, to let a newer or junior agent go by themselves, you know, because you're competing against really, really top people. Got it. Got it. Good. Thank you. Any questions for Kenny, guys? Anybody else have any questions for Kenny? All right, Kenny, let's go to what's your day look like? I mean, I'm assuming you're, you're extremely busy. So what, what is like a typical day with, with, with the fast agent? Um, I could show you like what, here's a good week. Yeah, I mean, I could share, I could show you. So this, this is uh, my week, every week. Literally every this all these appointments are the, are the set forward for every week. Monday mastermind. Uh, this one I don't really go too much. So I'll skip it. Uh, mastermind Tuesday. I have my uh, eight thirty coaching call with Raquel. Uh, then that leads into this is really great. I get my ideas from her and then I bring them into my nine o'clock uh, leadership meeting. And then we we brainstorm. We work on the slides. We talk about company growth. And then we go right into our team meetings on Tuesday, which lasts about an hour. And then Wednesday it's uh, three. You know we have seven squads on our company. So, you know, we're a team ASP, so we can't call ourselves a company, but if we were a company, we have seven teams that are preset. So I, I try to attend as many as I can uh, of their meetings uh, once a week. It's our uh, accountability group. So last month between 50 agents, we did about 65 transactions that are part of Zillow Flex team. Zillow Flex team just has a higher level of accountability. Uh, and then I have a 1030 call every Wednesday, three times a week, uh, month with EXP for agent, uh, agent attraction. Every two weeks is the bi-weekly fast forward general meeting. And then I have a mastermind in Wanda Creek. When an agent on my team started hosting events in person, about 50 people show up. Um, Thursday is very heavy on, on Zillow Flex. Uh, we meet with our team leaders, our squad leaders at 8, 30, 8 to 8, 8.45 uh, to drive company growth on the Flex team. At 9.30, we meet with all the Flex team members. I think there's like 56 right now at 9.30. At 10.30, we have additions and then 11 o'clock have a coaching call. Uh, two o'clock we meet, we were launching a curriculum class library thing of like <clears throat> on Teachable, but we moved over to Mighty Networks. Uh, happy kind of, we got the, a lot of the top teams like Patterson, Kyle Wiseau, uh, Pemberton are all doing these curriculum. So you want every video there. So we're building that right now with a deadline by next week. Uh, Friday morning is our, I have a mastermind with other Flex team leaders at seven. I have a Zoom call. Um, at 9.30 for my eight ESP agent attraction mastermind, it's like five of us. And we have a team meetings at three o'clock. So those are things on Sunday, Saturday morning, seven o'clock, I'm in GoBundance. Everyone's net worth is a million dollars. So we talk about health, relationships, um, money, investment, and like just pillars on seven o'clock. I, I try to always make that call. So those are like the set things every single week that do not change. And everything else would be, you know, I use county filling in with uh, recruiting calls or a listing appointment that's literally the only two other things I, I want to do so it's it's pretty like structured but but everything else is empty and then anyone books me at any given time oh monday wednesday friday 8 30 9 30 it's not a second priority because whenever i don't have any appointments i always jump on the coaching call with elias three times a week it's those calls we have 50 of our team members come in they're used for agent attraction too it's just really great 
Uh, but any other time of day that you see playing is completely bookable by anyone up until 8 p.m. with uh, my Zoom link. So my, my days are all different every day, at least half of it. But those things that you see are like completely set every single week. So you can do both. You can be very structured and you can be kind of loose, but you need to know everything on those meetings are very, very important. And that, that drives company growth. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else, guys? Anybody else have any questions for Kenny? Let's talk about, um, yeah, who else wants to go? How did you do this first half of the year? Um, you know, how did you do it in terms of your goals? What do you want to accomplish this next half of the year? Um, have you thought about that? What do you think you have to do? Let's, let's kind of open this up, dissect it a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, yeah, so for the first first half of the year, um, my production was about seven million, a little bit under seven million uh, for the year. Um, and as far as transactions and and goals for the year, I'm 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 still on mark on the mark for what I set at the beginning of the year, uh, for the end of the year. Uh, but um, the one thing I was talking about a little bit last week that I found it's kind of hindering me a little bit. Um, as far as I do like the, my hour of power every day, my, you know, uh, prospecting and following up, um, is the current listings I have and me kind of having to do everything within those listings. So, um, I think that's, what's kind of holding me back a little bit from surpassing what my goals are. And, you know, even this $7 million production, I'd want that to be at, you know, like 14 million for the first half of the year and, and that kind of thing. So, um, I'm on track for the goals from the beginning of the year, but as I've been going through through this first half of the of the year, I see that I want to do more and I want to be able to um, to surpass what I'm on track to do. Excellent. So I mean, it it sounds like it's just a matter of, of bandwidth, right? Like if you're if you're busy doing working on your listings and you can't go out and find new business, right? Which that's that's usually the problem as you get busier, right? So yeah. Uh, what sort of advice can we give? Uh, to Jose, Kenny, what, what kind of advice can you give to Jose? Uh, I mean, do you have, what, what's your uh, assistant or admin look like if you, if you have one? Uh, no, me, just me, myself, and I. <laughs> do you work with anyone else? Like, um, I have a TC, I have a TC. Um, I work with the team with my <laughs> wife, but um, she's kind of taking a, a, a back roll to it right now with our kids being in, out of school and, and that kind of thing. So. Um, it might be worth just getting like you know I, I even like up until like last last January I only had one agent on my team I always partner with agents on my uh, within my company so I didn't really have a real team but I still mm -hmm. cranked out 88 deals that year you know working with more senior agents maybe maybe you want to just train one agent because all my all my splits with my uh, my agents that I am on listings on is 75 25 so I'm not giving away a lot of the company um but that when they're, you know, answering questions to the client, uh, checking in and walking the property and all the stuff, you know, listing agents do physically, you know, that can give you more time for another hour of power to squeeze out another deal. So, you know, you got, you got I think if you really want to grow, you got to get some leverage, you, you know, you'll pay some money out, but you'll, you'll make it back more just really recently about a month ago. I, I finally hired, like, like I didn't run like many other teams, which is actually a better way to do it like a listing concierge because I wanted my newer agents to learn that stuff. If someone's just doing it for them, they're not going to learn anything. But now that I probably have six or seven solid co-listing agents, I've hired a listing concierge. Maybe, maybe you don't want to go to the assistant uh, partner and large team route. Maybe you just hire someone to handle all that stuff on, a, on an hourly basis. Cause that that's probably like, I, I paid 30 uh, cause she's, she worked for a top producer and she's very talented, but you could probably get away with like 2025 20, range and I'll set that. Cause you know, you're a top producer your time is probably worth like, I don't know, like you calculate your, your hours, you're probably in that like $150, $200 an hour um, range. So you really shouldn't be doing anything under conservatively like a hundred bucks. You know, that way you can go earn the other 150, 200, but then you're not really earning 150, 200. You're building your business towards making two, three, 400, right? My, my, my time, you know, selling a thousand homes a year is super valuable. So anything I can hire for, like I'll, I'll want out. Cause like for like, just, High is the best use time, right? It's definitely listings. Listings or, or building a team. You're not building a team. It's, it's definitely, you want to get as many listings as possible. But you don't even have to actually 
like for me on the, I spent about six hours on listing maybe like on takes 10 tops like but really like the partners handle everything so you can go get more listings cool thank you yeah. excellent advice so yeah I, I think that I, just to back that up is as as you get busier you're going to need someone to take those things off of your plate right or else you're not going to be you're going to keep hitting a wall where you can't produce more because you're too busy handling whatever's coming in um, but if you just do the math right let's say it takes 10 hours of work to manage a listing whether it's coordinating you know stagers photographers all that stuff inspections and you're paying someone 25 bucks an hour um times 10 that's only 250 bucks and you're making 20 grand so right <laughs> think about that so think about that right like in that 10 hours that you get back where you can now go out and get more listings you know or get more business or build a team or whatever it may be, where you're gonna make, you know, 100 times that amount, you know? So it's, it's pretty clear that you need to pay someone to do this stuff for you, right? That's gonna be the difference between you growing, you know? Yeah, like your, your, your range, like a lot of our, like our top, we run our company where like we have a lot of resources, but they're independent. Like in that range, when you're a 15, 10 to 20 minute producer or, or higher, you really don't need more leads. You have a database that you're not calling, like, it you don't need Zillow and whatever all this stuff is right or farming you, you really have people you're, you're not talking to so when you're in that range it's all about operations and leverage it's not about you know getting more more leads ever yeah I think you, you need more leads when you have like a bunch of agents that you need to feed opportunity to at this point yeah. it's just a matter of just switching up the way your business is set so that you can focus more on what you do best, which is the sales aspect, right? Which is your highest and best use and get rid of all the, the administrative tasks on the back end. So even if it costs you $500 per deal for someone to manage your listing and your average listing is a million bucks, you know, let's just say at two and a half percent, that's, you know, $25,000 that you're bringing in and you're paying 500 bucks, you know, yeah, to someone way, to, way worth it. To a, lot, a lot of top teams. That, like both me and Enrique know, um, like JP, I mean, I think uh, Enrique know who JP is. Yeah. And that very common to pay the coordinators about 10%. That way you don't feel comfortable taking a risk and you only do it on, on, on deals. And they handle everything from top to bottom for about 10%. Yep, that's mm. another way to structure it, right? You pay them a percentage of the commission, um, which might cost you a little bit more, but then you don't have to pay nothing up front, right? So uh, it's always going to be cheaper when you pay someone hourly versus a percentage. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to shell the money out up front, right? So it just depends what your what sort of position you're in. But yeah, bro, you, even if you pay 500 bucks to a, a listing manager and another 500 bucks to a TC, that's a thousand bucks on a $25,000 grossing deal. And now like you got all the headaches off your back. Now that's yeah. their problem, right? That's their problem. Don't call me. This is what I'm paying you for. Only get me involved if there's like a, a emergency or a fire. Um, and what's going to happen also is that your level of customer service will, will be a lot better because now you're not doing everything right. You're not so overwhelmed. Um, there's someone who's specifically handling those tasks who will probably do it better than you because that's all they're focusing on. Right. So you, you know, when we started adding admin to our staff, what happens is that the clients start liking our admins more than they like us because our admins are always, you know, talking to them. Right. And when we get that review at the end, it's like, yeah, they might mention my name, but then they mentioned my admin's name like five times in the, re the five-star review that they leave us. Um, and that means to me that it's working, right? Like that, that's the system is working, you know? Yeah, so you're, you're in every, you're, make sure you're in every single email, make sure you're in every single group text. So you're not really like delegating out. You're just having someone work for you on it. You're still the primary person. Uh, and then you're, you know, you can be involved as involved and if you're not crazy busy, you know, you can, you can be in every single text and respond to every single thing. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're the quarterback, right? Like you're, you're overseeing everything. You're jumping in when you need to jump in. So. Um, right. No, thank you guys. This is, this is great value information. And even, even last week's call also with uh, Jason has some really great stuff for me. So yeah. Thank you guys. For sure. For sure, bro. Let's do it, man. You got this. Um, who else? Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to add, I think one of the things for Enrique and I for the last year, or maybe the last maybe 18 months, one of the biggest things for us was kind of stepping back and getting out of production because we are so used to being in that, you know, behind that kitchen table with that family, 
doing that whole process, that's what we're, you know, it feels like a win every time. But when we had to take, you know, kind of step back, train our guys and give them the, the skill to go ahead and make sure that they're going to hire, handle it at a high level was a huge, huge mind shift for us. And I think, you know, we battled it for a while where we thought nobody can do it the way we can. Right. And, and ultimately, no, these people can, you know, they, there's people out there that can actually even do it better. And so just kind of making that little mind shift of think, you know, you, you're, you don't have to be the one putting up the sign. You don't have to go make a copy of the key. You don't have to open the door for the inspector. You know, let's, let's get someone to do that so we can start growing this business. Yeah. So and then it's uh, kind of like a junior yeah. agent or a partner is maybe even more involved because they want to win more of your business and then they have less distractions. They don't have as many other escrows going on and they're, they, they're they're only responsible for like this portion of it and it's very task based so like our my, our agents like their emails are better they, they have more time to joke around with the clients like i i just don't you know like i've fit i have 100 texts on red like I, I can't be that involved right so you, the person you bring in will probably spend a lot more time thinking how to make it better versus on the next deal which as you're building it out you are you know you're you're it's i learned from chris Lim uh way back you know they don't just hire you. They hire your standard quality of care. Like if I work with Jason, I might not get Jason, but I know he has a very high level of expectations of what, what the experience feels like. So you're, you know, you're, you need to figure out how to deliver experience. And it doesn't have to be from you. Like, you know, you, you go to Starbucks, right? You don't expect the CEO of Starbucks serving you coffee. The, the, the bird sales will do it 1,500 times better, right? So think, think about what that, what that means. Like, you go to the hotel, the manager and all that. The managers are pretty awful sometimes, right? They're trying to save money and they don't, the, 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 but the person in the front desk wants to kind of help hook you up. So like get, get that person that wants to like deliver experience while you're, you own the hotel or you own Starbucks. Yep. Great advice, man. Yeah. When you go to KFC, the Colonel doesn't come out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I want the Colonel, right? <laughs> Uh, it's good. But I think this is a, honestly, it's not just for you, Jose. This is a, this is a, a great message for anyone in business. You know, it's, 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 that's how businesses grow when you start to duplicate yourself, right? You start to get people in place to do things that, you know, so you can be in more than one place at one time, you know? And um, as, as you heard Kenny talking about, like he's trying to do, you know, sell a thousand homes in a year, that's going to require a lot of people doing a lot of things, right? There's no way Kenny is going to, do that by himself and we fact, are we're selling a thousand homes already but then i want to sell three thousand homes next year and it's so like we're hiring a head right we're saying okay this is great like your seven million is great but this is what i'm doing right now is not going to take me to that next part and it's not just about hiring agents like how then because then my my leadership team would get stressed out like oh, nothing's running so we need more operations we need monday we need tech we need to do this we need to get coaching like we, this is a process you gotta figure out what your process looks like and it's gonna but you, you definitely need one you can't yeah. just like wing it. You, I mean, you, wing it works great if you're a new agent on the call to get to seven, 10, 20 million, but you want to like have a life and balance and time and th without, you know, family issues and all that, like you need, you need a process for every single thing. You can never, literally have, can never have too many processes, I feel, as long as once you start building processes, you're probably not the one running the processes. Like I don't do any of my listing prep, my, my partners do my CMA. So like for me now, I've gotten to the point where I just show up for a list appointment. I'd be like, hey, what do you think this was worth? Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, you're talking, you're, you're talking ranges, right? I mean, the market's crazy. You know that this property is probably 900 to a million, one, depending on upgrades and stuff, right? So like it's, it's took two gears to get to this point. So you just got to figure out how you can chop out every single piece into the, uh, for someone else as you're growing, whatever it is you're growing. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a cool feeling where you just show up and like everything's already done for you, right? You just show up. It's like the, like the brain surgeon, right? Like they show up just to, just to cut just to make that cut, right? Like they're not doing any of the other stuff. In fact, they got someone putting the gloves on for them, right? They turn their hands and they, someone puts the gloves on, hands on the scalpel. They just make that cut, yeah, right? Like that's like the, the way. Um, uh, the front desk, the RN, the nurse, and then yeah. the, the surgeon, right? You want to be the surgeon. So like early on, I don't do any of my listening prep, pulling the files, printing the stuff, listing agreement. Like I don't touch any, I don't, I would have struggle with doing that. Uh, and then they put that on the Dropbox for me. They print it out. I, now my partner does the CMA show up, but it's gotten years of that process to, to get that buyer. Same thing. Like I just, I mostly, I'm, I do a lot of buyer consultation, but that's it. Like I go in, I, I help my, my partners win the deal of filling the gaps, let them talk. And then when you're, when you're kind of working with newer agents, you want to, I got this from a KW agent. Imagine you have three listing appointments or three buyer consultation. The first one you do all talking. Second one, you mix it up. 
they're when they should be all talking. You fill in the gaps, and then and then that's that's how you can actually run every appointment later on. And then I do that with try to do that with every agent, and then get them in motion, and then they're they're good, and then you go. Yeah. And these things don't happen overnight, guys. That's that's the other thing to point out, right? It's like it, these things happen over time. You start to add, but it should be in your mindset that I want to get as many of these tasks off of my plate as quickly as possible, depending on what level you are at in your business, you know, but uh, it should frustrate you when you're out making a copy of a key, right? You should be like, man, I'm wasting my time. And I'm, I remember there was a point in my career when I was designing the flyers and doing all that. And like, I like designing stuff. That's part of like who I am. I like the art side. And then I would just like halfway through, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I working on this damn flyer? Like, I need to pay someone to do this, right? Like, it, yeah, I like doing it, but it's it's just it's wasting my time right now, right? I could be doing something. And we <laughs> still and we still pay people to do it, and he still gets involved. I gotta pull him back, man. I gotta say, yeah. Enrique, we hired someone. Get back. Uh, that's just but you're design thing. like designing it, right? That's that. Like I I, I I like designing, but you shouldn't be. Once you have the template, you shouldn't be doing it again. That's the thing, like yeah. unless you want to tweak it exactly right so i don't know that's just the way my brain's wired but uh it's it's a it's a mental shift where you got to just let go you got to let go right um let go and and you know and tweak it and adapt it over over time good stuff I think um, the big thing too i think the big thing too is it, it sounds very overwhelming like enrique says but again just pick a few things that you want to add and build through that process right just a few things at a time we do it you know like we talked about Last week, Jose, Enrique and I will pick a few, we call them rocks or tasks that we'll pick each quarter and we'll just kind of dive deep into each one of those. And then you, you continue to do that every quarter and then you, you'll see the systems being built out. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Uh, who else wants to share? How are you doing? How's your business going this first half of the year? Um, where are you struggling? What do you want to do the second half? Let's get some coaching going. I'm going to call on you. Irvin, I'm going to call on you, bro, just because I like I like that shirt you're wearing, bro. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think this was uh, the first quarter. I experienced two things, like catching fire, I think, officially for the first time on the Q2. Um, and then turbulence in escrow at the same time. So that the turbulence was kind of derailed me from like posting more on social. So I was like, oh my God, like this is kind of crazy, right? Like, you know, like missing contingency, removal deadlines, missing these things because of delays or, um, but just kind of powering through it, right? So it, it, I think uh, Q3 is, for me, it's, it's going to be learning how to, learning, understanding that though there's a fire going on here, right or what i think is a fire right not to distract me from still looking for new business right um i think that's my my next um step right because now I'm, I'm back in i wouldn't say i wouldn't say i'm back at zero now I, I still have buyers that are now getting ready to start looking at homes but i feel like i could have came into q3 with more momentum had i not been too distracted by the by what was going on in escrow with the current deals that I had going on. Yeah. Yep. That's the, that's the, the pitfalls, right? Like you got deals, you were, you were prospecting a lot to get those deals, right? You were making stuff happen and then you got deals and now you're working on those deals. So then you can't work on getting more deals. Right. Uh, and you're dealing with some of that turbulence Who has some advice for, for Herman. So just to speak on Hervin's thing, that actually, I actually uh, talked to Jason about that uh, before, I think as soon as the quarter started or before this last quarter ended, um, that's kind of, that's exactly what happened to me. Uh, my first quarter was really, 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 really good. But what I didn't do was uh, I didn't continue prospecting for new business because I was so focused on whatever I had in my face. And then I caught myself the second quarter only prospecting for new business and there was nothing really like hitting for me. Um, and then now this quarter, everything that I prospected for last quarter is starting to happen now. Um, and that's the conversation I had with Jason. I was like, hey man, like I want to talk to you. Like I pulled him to the side and say, hey dude, I want to talk about my production because I'm not happy at all. 
So we kind of dissected it. We talked about what I did the, you know, the previous quarters, I didn't do this one. So now I know, and now I'm back on track. Um, advice for Hervin, man. I, I, I was there and it sucks. I mean, I was there that whole last quarter. Um, never stop pro prospecting for new business. What I, what I noticed is that whatever I had in my face, either it closed or it fell through, but I was so focused on that, that I just forgot to generate new business. And it really hit me, uh, on the second quarter, but, uh, now I'm back on track. Uh, two listing appointments this week. Uh, both look like they're going to be really good. And I just have more business coming in as, as, uh, as the weeks come in. So, I mean, I don't know if yeah. that helped, but my, um, my experience, I don't know. Yeah. The, the one I would say the, what I thought was going to be like a, um, like a patch, right. To not let business like, like fall out, um, was I just got assistance. I took the last mastermind from like that we did last week. I took that advice. I'm like, okay, what can I do? Cause, uh, I was also in the middle of this move from one place to another. I'm just like, so I got assistance from ISA. So I put an ISA and all the leads that I thought were like, boom, like, these are the ones that I, I think I'm like, these are hot, but I don't have the time or the attention span to tend to them. And it was like crazy how like amazing that helped. Like I was able to do this while they were being taken care of and my clients thanked me for it. Like they're super happy. So it's like, sometimes people, some people can do things better than you can. And I'm just here now just showing up to consults. <laughs> like, this is great. Let's keep it going. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that, that was a little, yeah, it turned out to be a more than just a patch. It was like an amazing, amazing things to do. Yeah. Thanks, Kenny, bro. Appreciate okay, your time, man. A lot of good stuff. Uh, so Herman, I think um, just some feedback on that, bro. It's uh, like just looking at Kenny, right? Who's producing at a really high level, you know, is look how structured his week is, right? Like there's, those are all non-negotiables, right? Non-negotiable things that he's doing every single week, right? And for him, it looks a little different because he's, he's at a higher level. He's running the team and all that stuff. But it doesn't matter what level you're in, there needs to be non-negotiable things, right? If you're just a salesperson, you know, or you're the team leader, there's certain things that have to happen every single day that's going to keep your business moving forward. And for the sales agent at your guys' level, that's going to be new business development, right? Making contacts. Like, he was, like Kenny was saying, he's focused on the action items that are going to make the things happen, right? The little things that make the big things happen. So that prospecting guys, it's, it's crucial, right? Like if you're not talking to people every single day about real estate, your business is going to die because whoever you talk to today, that may not turn into something until, you know, two or three months from now, right? We're always a quarter behind, right? Even if someone says, yes, I want to, you know, buy a home today, or I want to sell, it's going to take a few months by the time that thing, you know, gets in the contract and, and closes, right? So it's, we have to make those non-negotiables. Uh, in our schedule. And, and we have, we have a, a structure at our, on our team, right? But not everyone always follows it, right? Like we have it and there's only so much that we can push you guys in. And, but at the end of the day, guys, you, at the end of the day, you guys got to deliver, you know, only you guys know if, if you're kind of like sneaking in or kind of skating behind or like, you know, you're on zoom, but you're not really making calls, you know, stuff like that, like that only you guys know if you're actually putting in the work. So, um, and, and the other takeaway, guys, is that what I've learned in, in, you know, from being in business for so long is that every deal is going to have an obstacle. So just just already put that in your mind on every single transaction. There's going to be a speed bump. Some of them might have multiple speed bumps. Some of them might have one. But just assume that every deal is going to have something that you have to battle or have to get over some bigger, some smaller. Um, if you get a smooth deal, that's a blessing. That's the cherry on top, right? So I already go into it with like, yeah, it, it's going to come. I'm just waiting for it to come whenever it comes and, and we'll tackle it. And what that does is it kind of just de-stresses you, right? It's like, like you kind of just like build the, the mentality that like, you know, I got this. It's, it's, part of, it's part of the game, you know? And when you get a, an obstacle or something happens, it's, it's not a knockout punch. You know what I mean? It, it's not a knockout, right? It, it's, it's a little jab. It's a little something you got to deal with. But you got to mean you, you can't let that derail you from your whole entire business plan. All right. So I, I think that's the big takeaway is just know that things are going to happen. It's up to you how you how you choose to deal with it. And nine times out of 10, because the way our business is set up, where we have transaction coordinators, there's multiple parties in the business. There's the lender, there's the, you know, the other agent title escrow. 
nine times out of 10, things will figure themselves out, right? It may not seem like it at the, at the moment, but nine times out of 10, like if everyone wants to make the deal happen, it'll work itself out, you know? Um, so with that being said, it's like, just, just don't take it as a knockout punch, guys. Yeah, just, just kind of add to that. I think um, if you go into it with that mentality, you won't be as stressed out on some of these, these scenarios that come up, right? And again, you know, this is talking from experience that we have by being in so many, you know, transactions where, like Enrique says, we already expect something's going to happen. Now, you know, for me, I think it's, it's definitely keeping to that schedule. If you're, you know, if you're still originating business or setting appointments, but it's, it's have that uncomfortable conversation with that scenario or whatever needs to be done immediately. And then you move on, you move on. But because if you let that thing just kind of, if you're dwelling on it or you kind of just continue to think about it for hours, it's not, it's not solving the situation. You got to go ahead and fix it or, or address it and then move on to what you need to do next, right? You sitting the whole day on it is not going to help and it's not going to, it's not going to help it, uh, it's not going to solve it, right? So just get it done with and move. Rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then that's the other thing I learned, having multiple uncomfortable situations with listing agents. <laughs> but it, it, like, it was like back to back to back, but each one taught me for the next one. So it just got easier and easier. Um, but yeah, that was, I guess, that was the last thing I learned from Q2. <laughs> Good stuff, bro. We'll keep it moving. Uh, who else wants to share? Steve, Pedro, how you guys doing, bro? How's your how's your business first half of the year? Uh, any hurdles or obstacles? And and you know, what do we need to do for the second half of the year? Yeah, I can go. Uh, so this year, I just started with movement. Uh, I moved over from uh, guaranteed rate, and uh, so far it's been uh, pretty amazing. Um, I, I've already funded about uh, 12 mil in business in the first quarter. And, and now we just brought on some new products, especially jumbo products. So that should help uh, increase some more volume on that side uh, with the we're very competitive rates with like US Bank and all them now. So uh, yeah, things have been, been pretty amazing. I'm just starting to put more uh, video content in place. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel soon uh, to talk more about the process and then the different loan structures and things like that to really help clients understand what they're getting into, as well as why they shouldn't be investing in property. So these are all the things that I'm, I'm looking to do as I keep moving forward. Good stuff, bro. Um, you have a goal that you set out for the, for the year of where you want to be as far as, you know, units, you know, loans. Closed yeah. Or right now was, uh, so my goal for the year is to fund 50 million. Okay. Um, I'm a little shy right now on that, uh, but that's okay. Uh, like I said, uh, moving over and it's, it's kind of like starting a new process, but at the same token, you just got to continue pushing and putting more things in place. So right now I've been doing more refis than I have been purchases. And that's another thing that I want to try to increase. I'm about 70% refi and 30% purchase. And I need to flip that around. Got it. So what do you think are a couple action items that you could take, you know, to, to generate more purchase business? So I have uh, increased my lead uh, expense, uh, expense. So that I've been working with as well. So I have a few lead generations that I'm, um, they're, they're starting to come in. The next thing is also to, I'm setting, I have a, uh, a person that I'm setting up appointments for me uh, with realtors to kind of put, you know, the face to the name and, and see how I may be able to help them. So that's a, those are the key things that I've uh, started to put in place. Got it. Okay, cool. How are you generating leads? What's, what's your lead sources right now? Like uh, you said, you're, are you doing like online marketing or anything like that? Yeah. So I'm doing online marketing. I'm actually going to be doing some, uh, I haven't done any social media marketing. So that's mm -hmm. the, what I've been working with on someone that's going to be taking taking over all my social media content and doing some um, direct posting, I believe it is, or, or what it is on that. But also uh, just brought on Lending Tree uh, as well. So Lending Tree is gonna, I've been working with them on uh, purchase leads as, as well as. 
Got it. So okay. Investing in those two different avenues. Got it. Um, I think just some just some feedback from like what what we've seen works is you got to have a couple pillars of, of where you get your business from, right? And you got you want to try to go as deep as possible. Um, for us, you know, our sphere, right? SOI is 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 a big one. It's probably half of our business comes from our you know past clients, friends, and family. Um, so if that's going to be, and I think that should be everyone's, you know, one of their, one of their pillars. So you got to just figure out how are you going to continue to stay in front of those people and continue to generate referrals from them. And then for us, our other source is basically online leads, right? So it's kind of those two things, online leads and sphere. And how can you go deep with the online leads, right? So maybe picking if lending tree is the one that you want to work with and, and you like, you know, the quality of those leads, then. How can you go all in with lending tree? How can you dominate the lending tree leads? You know, what's your exact process for when that lead comes in? What are the steps that happen afterwards? Uh, who's the one calling those leads back, right? Is that, are those leads going straight to you? Are you calling them? Is there someone else that's in charge of responding to those right away? Um, there needs to be some sort of mapped out process of how you're gonna handle those leads. Cause with, uh, with online leads, it's conversion is, is, is the hardest thing, right? Yeah. Um, I think we've learned that leads are easy to get nowadays. There's so many different sources that can give you leads, you know, if you want to pay or if you, uh, upfront, or if you want to give a referral fee or whatever it might be. I think getting leads is not no, no longer the problem. It's, it's how, it's what you do to convert those leads at a high level. So um, those are just some of the things I would recommend, bro, is just really, really figure out what your processes are. Um, and then if, you know, in, in the mortgage space, right, realtors are a big source as well, right? So what, what's your process for gaining new realtor relationships? What do you do to nurture that relationship? You know, like what's the whole entire system you're going to build out around that? Um, and a lot of successful, you know, teams or agents that I see, they only have maybe one or two, maybe three, you know, different um, ways that they're getting business, right? Yeah. Um, but, but those one or two, they're like going super deep. Like they're really like doing a bunch of different things to, to, to generate the business and convert that business at a high level. Cause you start spreading yourself too thin. And then what happens is you're doing a bunch of different things and none of them are really hitting uh, at a high level. Right. And you end up yeah. spending money, you end up spending time. Um, when, if you just went all in with one, you, you probably would have gotten a, a better result and those results will compound over time. Right. So that's, that's just some feedback I, I can give you from what is awesome. That's uh, exactly kind of what I've been focusing on uh, because I do have a few top realtors that I've worked with and uh, we're now starting to put some uh, I'm investing some marketing dollars with them as well. And then just going deep into their company. Uh, the second thing is that we did switch over to a new uh, CRM for our company. So that's kind of been a, a kind of a pain, but not, you know, it's, it's going to be well worth it once it's all set up. Uh, I am creating a couple of different processes with following back with all my past clients as well. Actually physically trying to touch them as, as, as much as possible. Yeah. Excellent, man. Good stuff. Um, and and really quick, I, I, know, I know Enrique kind of went over like the broad, you know, having yes. them in place. Uh, if you ever want to have, you know, a private conversation, I can share with you on our online leads exactly what we're doing. Right? Awesome. It, it's not rocket science. It's really, really basic. But I can share with you, you know, and you can use whatever part of that process to, to help you out. Uh, I, re I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff, guys. We got we got about five more minutes. Uh, Pedro, you want to share some stuff, bro? How you doing, brother? good man thank you for for having me on this on this call um i uh i can't say i've had a super productive year man i feel like i have to i have to get unstuck um i had a lot of things that were kind of holding me uh kind of like what you were alluding to i was kind of I had to spread myself too thin i was doing a lot of zillow uh leads and I, I just i didn't really enjoy the process of working with buyers in you know during this period of uh before uh, we opened up again, just because it was, it was just, um, I was getting, I was having, it was just, maybe I didn't have the right mindset, you know, uh, cause I had good experience 
during uh, the pandemic getting listings. But um, when I started working with buyers more and, and investing more in, in the Zillow leads, I just, um, I, did, I didn't have the right mindset. I just, uh, I felt like I was, I was, it was a distraction and, and, and they were just kind of shopping around. They weren't uh, willing to sign like an exclusivity agreement. And um, so after showing them homes for multiple weekends, I would just kind of just uh, give up on my, on my marketing to them and trying to convince them to, 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 to uh, work with me exclusively. So, and then I went on vacation. So I think it's, it's all about momentum, right? So um, I'm just trying to regain that momentum again. Got it, got uh, it. Uh, Have you figured out like what, what, what is it you want to focus on? Do you want to, you know, primarily just go after listings? Do you want to still work with buyers? Like going forward, do you have any sort of game plan of, of, of what you want to do and what you want to focus on? Yeah, I think, um, like when I'm working with a couple of buyers and I know that they're serious, I know that they're qualified, we're helping them with a mortgage, so I know that they're uh, and they're committed to me and I have a little bit more control of the process as opposed to them kind of working with multiple people or people that I don't know. Um, so I'm working with some buyers, I'm willing to work with buyers that like I, that were referred to me in these things, but as far as, I, I, don't, I don't wanna work so much on online leads, I wanna work more on cultivating uh, my own network and, and relationships and, and, and maybe, Working more on doing marketing, uh, COI marketing, maybe some farming, and and um, trying to monetize my my database because I haven't really done any sort of uh, re reach out like reaching out to past clients or or my database. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, I mean, I think number if you have a database, guys, like a lot of times we we forget to hit that database because we got other leads coming in or online leads and stuff like that. But your database is, is probably going to be your biggest source of business, but we got to remember that a database is also like, it's, you got to, something you got to nurture and take care of, right? Like if you haven't spoke to someone in years and then all of a sudden you call them, you can't expect for them to, you know, go, yeah, Hey, I want to buy a home or I want to sell a home. Right. In that time, they may have already generated, you know, worked a relationship with somebody else that is more in front of them. So, um, but that doesn't mean that we don't go back and, and try to re-engage them. So one of the things we actually just mentioned this, this yesterday at our team meeting was, you know, we're about a year and a half now into COVID, right. In the beginning of COVID, we reached out to all our past clients, all our close friends, all our family, just to say, hey, how are you guys doing? You know, is there anything you need right now? I know these, these times are tough. These times are crazy. Um, what, you know, is there anything you need? It doesn't have to be real estate related. You know, is there any way we can help you out or just checking in on you? So I think right now, now that we're kind of 18 months in, now that California has reopened back up, it's a perfect opportunity to reach out to people um, to see how they're doing, right? How have they been doing during COVID? Now that California has reached back up, you know, what are their plans going forward? Doesn't necessarily have to be real estate, but I would say if you have a database, you know, however big or, or small that is, like just go down the list, bro, and just start calling them, send a personal message, a personal text. Um, I remember seeing, I could do a screen share real quick. Let me pull this up. Uh, And Pedro, yeah, that, that's the majority of our business is our SOI. I mean, we, when we track our numbers, so definitely it's, it's worth, you know, setting that system in place. So you are reaching out and touching your, your SOI a few times a year. Yeah. So this is, um, this is just a little template, you know, that we created in our, in our CRM where we can now mass, you know, email it and text it out. And it's basically, hi, Pedro. Hey, it's Enrique with PRG Real Estate at EXP. I hope you've stayed healthy during the pandemic. Now that the economy is open back up, I want to check in and see if you still have any plans to buy or sell this year. Can I assist you with anything right now or answer any questions? You know, um, so we're going to be sending this out to like all the leads in our database. You know, we got like, I don't know, over 5,000 leads in our CRM, just a mass mail. Um, and those are more, you know, strangers, right? But if you're calling you know, your close friends or family, you may like tailor the message a little bit, right? More like you're just checking in. And if they know you're in business, right? Like it's naturally the conversation will happen. You know, what have you been up to? What have you been up? This is what I'm doing right now. And a lot of times the clients are the ones who, who end up talking about, 
oh yeah, so-and-so's looking to buy, so-and-so's looking to sell, or I'm thinking of doing this, or how's the market, you know? And it just happens organically by you just calling them and checking in, you know? So uh, I would start there. Um, do you know how big your database is or how many people do you have a database put together or? Probably like 2,500. There you go, bro. That's, that's a lot of people right there, right? So um, chunk it down, you know, maybe you're calling, you know, 15 people a day, you know, and X amount of days and you'll get to the whole 2,500. If you want to use technology to reach out to them, you know, sooner, you can. If you even want to record a video and just send a video message, right? That's another way. So there's ways where you can use technology to kind of get it done a little bit faster, but um, nothing beats like that old fashioned, just phone call and just checking in on someone, you know, especially if it's someone close to you or someone that you have a, a good relationship with. And, and I promise, man, if you just focus on that, um, you'll get business out of that. I, um, so the company I'm with, they don't like the CRM is not very, they developed it in house or they bought like a company that provides a CRM. It's kind of clunky. It's not that good. So I'm looking at a different, uh, um, system like real geeks or i'm not sure who, who i should go with but is there some vendor that you recommend yeah jason just posted in the chat it's called agentlegend.com okay thanks. Uh, check out agent legend and i think what agent legend allows you to do is do like a drop voicemail blast um where you yeah. can record a pre-recorded voicemail right yeah, so with Agent Legend, again, that's I put it in there because I don't know what kind of CRMs you guys have. This would work great even for for uh, for Steve. Or, but basically, you can you can go ahead. It'll immediately send a text, email, and leave a voicemail. Drop a voicemail into their their uh, their number. So if you wanted to do like a mass, like what Enrique was showing you was a mass email, right? That's our CRM. Our CRM will do a mass email and a mass text. The agent legend, if you don't have a CRM, you just have maybe an Excel, you can upload some of those those contacts and then draft up a, a, a text and email and, a, and leave a, a live voicemail. So it worked pretty well. I use that quite a bit. I used that for a while before we switched over to the CRM we have now. Yeah. But it's just, it's a contact sport, right? So it's just, just making those contacts, bro. I would, you know. Do a blast. If you have 2,500 of them and you do a whole blast, you'll get people that respond. And then from there, you, you know, you try to set an appointment or whatever you got to do. But I, I would start there. I think that's a good way to start. Um, Zillow leads. How long have you been doing Zillow for? I've done Zillow leads I mean, off and on for a good 10, like almost like nine years, something like that. Got it. Okay. So you could probably go into your Zillow profile and export all of the leads in your Zillow profile that you've had over the last nine or 10 years. I would take all of those. I would dump them into a CRM. Or I would dump them into this agent legend thing. And I would send them a specific campaign uh, just from Zillow. Hey, it's Pedro. We, you know, we met, you know, we connected via Zillow, you know, sometime in the past, just want to check in with you. Now that the economy's open, do you guys have any plans to buy or, or sell this year? I know of some upcoming properties that are not on the MLS yet. And um, I've been able to help, you know, a lot of buyers get into contract, you know, during, you know, this competitive market and a lot of sellers get top dollar as well. So, you know, reach out to me if you have any needs, something like that, right? Like, cause you, sounds like you got stuff already in front of you. You just got to now put it together and, and go, go attack it. Um, we get, we close deals all the time from leads that came in a year ago or two years ago, right? Because the timing wasn't right. Um, you know, and now that things change now, now they might be ready to go. Any Thank questions? That's been really helpful. Awesome, man. So we're coming up on time guys. Uh, 1103. Um, this is uh, real estate growth Academy session 10 now 10. So we're going to have two more sessions of this guys uh, for our 12 to finish off the 12 weeks. So the next two Wednesdays um, will be our last two. And then we'll kind of figure out from there what we want to do. If we want to keep this thing going. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys got some value out of this. As always, you know, whatever you learned today, uh, go out there and apply it. Take those one or two pieces of information, those one or two things that really stood out for you and go out there and put a plan together um, so that you can increase your business and, and grow your business. And remember, guys, it's about going deep, not going wide. You know, there's, there's a million things you can do in your business, right? And it's not going to happen overnight. The people that consistently win and consistently make leaps and bounds in their business are the ones that 
pick two or three things that they're going to work on and they're going to go super deep on right now right and so that they can really get these ingrained in their business implemented in their business and they can see you know the things pay off in the next three to six months so uh, mm-hmm. this is the long game guys right we're not trying to make quick money like you this is a career we're trying to build we're trying to build a healthy sustainable business so you've got to go deep with these processes and um, if you've learned anything good and there's people that need help guys pay it forward help people out invite people to our mastermind that's just, that's what this is all about um if you guys need anything hit me up offline and we'll go from there guys just have a great week peace thanks guys you guys